Just about a month after putting his hat in the ring for North Charleston Mayor, former City Councilman Todd Olds joins us to share more on his candidacy. And you are no stranger to serving in public service. So um, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. And tell us a bit about your history in serving the City of North Charleston. Thank you, Layla. Yeah. Uh, I've served the city in eight years as a councilman from 2012 to 2020, as well as three years as a planning commissioner from 2009 to 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I am very familiar with the city, uh, having served in that capacity, and I have a high passion and desire for public service. And not only were you also on the committee of the Budget, Finance, and Public Safety and Health Benefits Committees. So, so you've had your hand in a lot of different pies. Um, you're also a former business owner yourself. And so with that experience, what do you think that's going to bring to the mayor's office in terms of its future, in terms of improving commerce here, crime? Tell us. Layla, uh, that's a good point. And I do think that this next leader of North Charleston needs to have experience. Uh, I am the only candidate that does have 30 years of private sector business experience. I've not been on the tax roll of city government or any type of government for 20, 30 years like some have. Uh, and I think it affords me the, the experience and the, the taxpayers the opportunity to have someone that can step in with a, a diverse understanding uh, uh, and someone that's attuned to the details of city government sure. and business. Uh, we must have somebody that's capable from day one to work with others. And through my 30 years of private sector experience, I've got a big, big backing in that and an understanding with working with people across this country from my, yeah. my business experience. Now your tagline is that you want to give the city a reboot. So, so what do you mean by that? Reboot our city. I think it's time for fresh ideas, a change. I think the citizens, the taxpayers, the longtime residents of North Charleston and the newcomers, I think they uh, want to have other, other persons leading to, to bring them other opportunities and betterment uh, for, for progress. Our, our infrastructure, our economic uh, commerce and things, uh, that's very strong and we need somebody that's able to keep that going and working across the table with persons or, or industries or businesses like Roper Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, West Rock who's shedding West Vaco plant down. We're gonna have to look to a line to do something there and bring mm -hmm. something better in the city for that. Uh, you know, and just merely taxes financial stability. Yeah. I think it's time that North Charleston be more focused on the taxpayer, on policy, and not politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you want to see an improvement in the, the community in which you live, but you don't want to necessarily see your taxes go up. So, but you have to pay for these different programs. You have to pay to see infrastructure improved and so on and so forth. So what would be a fiscally responsible way in which to get that done? Layla, that's pretty easy if uh, the right person goes in office, uh, which I'm hopeful it's me as the next leader. Uh, our budget is $147 million at the current time. There are many areas that we could reduce things in the budget. But one thing particularly is we have a growth rate of an average probably 1.2 to 1.4 percent a year in our city with new people coming and new businesses. So that in and of itself brings in a, a additional revenues. Sure. Our highest revenue source is obviously property taxes. Our second source is business licenses. Mm -hmm. And then our third comes from accommodations and hospitality tax. Well, we need to strictly look at the budget figure out what's priority and foremost for the citizens to provide them the essential core services that government is first responsible for. Yeah. Not need, not wants, it's needs first and then wants. Sure. Uh, we, we can cut the budget or, or save millions of dollars just by going to fair bidding processes and not doing sole source bidding, allowing only one company to do the work or to, to, to do a job. Oh, I see. There's a substantial amount of money that goes to sole source uh, companies and it's not being fair bidded. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, now I imagine that you've got some events that are coming up, so is there any way that people can come and meet you personally, have a face-to-face -face conversation? We do. We have several uh, community events coming up where we're going to be out at the homeowners uh, meetings. Uh, we're probably going to have some planned cookouts and things of that nature. Uh, and I'm going to be actively out in the community knocking on 7,200 doors at minimum wow. uh, for this election. And we're going to get it done and we're going to give the taxpayers an option to have a leader that cares about 
up taxes, improving the future infrastructure, mm -hmm. and easing the tax burdens on us. And speaking to infrastructure, we have no source of, of revenue to cover our future improvements. You There's know, a lot huge. of potholes out there. It's huge. And yeah. The, and the city's taking on more development, more development, sure. the previous uh, uh, 51 years of, of, of growth and development, and we have no funds set aside for those improvements. Mm -hmm. And we've got to figure ways and solutions to attack that without raising taxes on the citizens. Well, it'll be really interesting to talk to you as we go a little bit farther down the line and get closer to Election Day. We'd love to have you back. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Layla, thank you. you. All right. We're back after this.